Hey guys, welcome back. Fred here at Math Engineering. Third part of the question on one-way slab design. So in the first two videos, if, you, uh, if you're just starting on this video, if you just found this one, uh, go back to the first one because um, I'm not going to be explaining a lot of the stuff that I did in those. So yeah, go back. Link will be down below as usual. And uh, in the last video, we finished by, uh, after we calculated the area of steel that we needed, um, we calculated the spacing. So we calculated uh, the area of steel as 800 millimeter squared per meter strip um, in the uh, in the short direction here. And then we calculated the spacing based on the Canadian code requirements. We also checked that we have a steel controlled failure with this amount of steel, which we had. So um, ne next step is going to be that we're going to verify that our spacing of the bars is within acceptable limits according to the code. So according to the Canadian code for horizontal reinforcement, the maximum bar spacing, in this case we're going to call it S max, so we cannot exceed this spacing, okay, is equal to the lesser of these two values. So we have 500 millimeter spacing, or 3 times h, which is the height of the slab. Okay, and in our case, this is equal to 900. So the lesser is 500 out of those two. 500 governs in this case, okay? And as we can see from our spacing in the previous question, our spacing is equal to 250, which is less than 500, so we are okay. Our spacing is within acceptable limits according to the code. Very good. Let's take a look at the next step. So we're going to go ahead, and now we're going to check to see if the moment resistance of our slab is, is enough to carry the factored moment. So we're going to double check that the area of steel that we've provided is, is enough to carry the tension, essentially. So we're going to check that our moment resistance is larger than our factored moment per meter strip. And if you're not sure about this concept here with A and the compressive stress block, we did some videos. I'll also put those down below for you. So as we know, okay, A, okay, which is the depth of the compressive stress block, the equivalent compressive stress block of the, the beam, or the slab in this case, and I'll just draw it over here. Okay. So we have some neutral axis. This is subjected to some moment here. Okay. And in our case, we have a stress distribution here, and we have some compressive stress block A here, okay? And we have our T over here, and this is our steel, okay? So that's just a, a little reminder there. And A is simply equal to TR, okay, which is phi S, F-Y-A-S, okay, over alpha 1, phi C, F prime C, B. So this essentially we equaled CR to TR, and we rearranged for A. Okay, if we go ahead and plug in our values here, Okay, that's 800 millimeters squared per, me per meter. Alpha 1 for F prime C is 25 is just simply 0.8. We don't have to calculate it. F prime C is 25. And our B here is simply 1,000 millimeters because we're doing a one meter strip. If you'll remember, always for, uh, for one-way slabs, we're designing for one meter strip. Okay, if we calculate this, we're going to get an A value of 21 millimeters. Okay? And... Now that's exactly what we need in order to calculate our moment resistance of our slab. So let's go ahead and calculate the moment resistance. If you remember from pretty basic concrete stuff, we have TR times D minus A over 2. Okay, that's simply going to be, and our D in this case is 270, minus A over 2. And we're going to get a value of 71 kilonewton meter per meter strip. Okay, now all we need to do is compare this to our factored moment. and if you remember from previously, uh, when we when we designed for the uh, steel, our factored moment, that was in the previous video, we found to be 67.5 kilonewton meter per meter, which is less than MR. So we're okay. Our slab, uh, the steel that we provided, is enough in order to uh, resist the moment. Perfect. Now, we're going to need to check something called the crack control parameter. Okay, so the crack control parameter, we're going to call that Z, okay? Um, is just a, it's essentially it's governed by the cover and what it is is it's a clause in the code that uh, makes sure that we don't provide too much cover or if we do we need to you know ch decrease the spacing of the bars um, in order for tension cracks not to appear on the outside of the beam so this, this just is a clause that must be satisfied according to the Canadian code so the formula for Z given by the Canadian code is simply FS okay, times the cube root of DC Okay. And I'm just going to draw a picture over here for you of our slab. Okay, so this is our slab. 
Okay, let's just assume we have a few bars here, okay? And this area here, okay, we'll assume just to be our tension zone, okay? So this is our tension zone, all right? DC is the distance from the center of the rebar, or the center of gravity of the rebar. In this case, we only have one layer, so the center of gravity of the rebar is just the center of the bar, okay? To the bottom fiber of the tension zone. So that's going to be our DC value, okay? So in our case, it's simply just going to be the cover, okay, plus half of a bar size. So let's just start with DC. So we have cover. Our cover, in our case, is 25 millimeters from the last question, okay? And that is going to be plus half a bar, okay? We're using 15M for flexure, okay? So our DC in this case is simply going to be 25 plus 15, which is the cover, and then halfway to DC, 32.5 millimeters. Okay, we'll say that it's roughly 30 millimeters in our case, okay? We'll just round off there, that's not a problem. Okay, so, and actually we can just get this by taking the height of the slab and subtracting uh, our effective depth. That's also a good way to do it. Okay, so now that we have DC, how do we find A? Well, what does A mean? Okay, well A is simply uh, the area of the tension zone, okay, and divided by the number of bars. Okay, so area of tension zone divided by number of bars. Okay, what's the area of the tension zone? Well, uh, this is our B, right? And we know that our B is equal to a thousand millimeters. This is the one meter strip here. Okay, and this is simply just DC times two. Okay, so we have area of tension zone is going to be B, which is a thousand, times DC times two, which is 60. Okay, divided by the number of bars. Okay, and uh, if you go back to the last question, we found the number of bars per meter to be, since our spacing is 250, Okay, we have four bars per meter. Okay. So now that we, uh, we just go ahead and calculate this, we're going to get that this is equal to 15,000 millimeters squared. Perfect. So we have almost everything we need to check the crack control parameter, and we just need uh, FS. So FS is simply 0 0.6 FY, okay? And that's 0 0.6 times 400, simply equal to 240 MPa. Okay. Now, we can just go ahead and plug into this formula and get our Z value. Z is simply going to be 240 times the cube root of DC. DC is 30 times 15,000. We're going to get a value of 18,391 newton per millimeter. Okay, so that's the units here. And we need to compare it to our exposure. So um, the Canadian code says that uh, for an interior exposure, this number must be for interior exposure, this must be less than 30,000. And for exterior exposure, the standards are a little more strict. It needs to be less than 25,000. And it's actually less than both of these. It is an interior exposure. So we're okay for crack control. Just a quick note, if you're designing and you find that this clause uh, fails, um, you'll notice that this is heavily influenced one by A and DC, what, whatever's inside the cube root. This doesn't really change. Okay, and DC is gets larger which makes the this z value get larger as the cover increases. So if you have to provide a large cover, um, DC is going to get very big and so will z. Um, what you can do if you're having trouble satisfying this is decrease the diameter of the bar. So you'll decrease the spacing and A will go down. Okay, so that's just a little hint for you there. Now that we've uh, satisfied the crack control parameter, let's do one more thing here. We're going to design for shrinkage and temperature. Okay, so where um, where we're not, where our slab isn't really experiencing much flexure due to the superimposed load, we do want to provide um, just a minimum amount of reinforcement. So if the concrete shrinks or uh, if there's some temperature change and the concrete decides to um, you know, be exposed to some, some shrinkage, it may crack. So this uh, minimum reinforcement will help us uh, maintain the integrity of the slab in the in the long direction. So how do we do that? Well, the AS min, so the minimum required reinforcement in a horizontal direction according to the code is 0 0.002 AG. AG is simply base times height of the slab. Okay, and now the shrinkage reinforcement is going to be in the other direction, um, not the long direction. So if we have our slab here, this is our kind of long direction here. Okay, so our flexure is going to be transferred kind of in this direction here. Okay, in the short direction, in the long direction here, we're going to provide some shrinkage reinforcement. Okay, and that's going to just be equal to the minimum. So there's no load that we have to check and design for. We're just going to provide just a small amount. So how do we do that? Well, we're just simply going to provide the minimum. So our AG is, uh, we'll do it in a meter strip as well. 
Okay, so one meter strip this way. Okay, AG is just simply going to be one meter times the height times 0 0.002. Okay, so we're going to get 600 millimeters squared. And the maximum bar spacing, again, is the smallest of 3H and 500. Okay, and as we uh, did before, 500 governs. So we're going to use 500 millimeters for the spacing for our minimum reinforcement. Okay. Now, what is uh, this is the maximum. Let's find the actual reinforcement required. Okay. So S sp the spacing, and we're using uh, 15m again. So we have 200 millimeters per bar. That's going to be times B, which is a thousand, divided by the required amount of steel, 600, and we're going to get a spacing of 333 millimeters. So let's just say, for construction's sake, spacing at 300 millimeters. So for shrinkage reinforcement, we're going to provide 15M at 300 millimeter. Cool. So come back for the next video, guys. Thank you very much for watching that. I uh, hope you learned something. Next video, we're going to come back and we're going to just go ahead and detail the, uh, just detail the slab. Thanks for watching.